little while ago, I made a video about Gaussian splats and how to make them work in an Apple Silicon Mac environment. I had seen and I'm continuing to see that people who are on Macs had been maybe having some issues with this um, primarily Windows plugin made by Tim Gerritsen and I made a few edits to the GLSL to allow it to run on an M1 kind of just through trial and error and playing around. On a Mac this is sort of what people were seeing. Um, since then I've kind of published my own version. I made a YouTube video about it, but you can access that version also for free from my GitHub, which is all linked in the original YouTube tutorial, which I'll also link to in the comments for this video. But what I wanted to talk about today is some updates, some ways of manipulating splats, and also some issues people have encountered in all of the plugins um, that I've come across. Uh, in particular, this sort of lensing effect that happens when you switch to a portrait orientation. And uh, I'm going to show you some fixes for that and some kind of new alterations that, that I have made to, um, to mitigate that and some basically kind of updates to the plugin. So the first one I'm going to show you is Gaussian splatting portrait. And this was actually a really simple fix. I hadn't done any portrait renders in my Gaussian splat environment before so this was kind of news to me because I had just always gone with the you know 1280 by 720 um, frame ratio but basically what um, we're encountering here was really easily fixed the lensing issue kind of came primarily from this uniform scale being set to one so we can see right now if I have that set to one we have this weird lensing if I push it up a bit to 1.2 or 1.3, it sort of enlarges that frame and we no longer have that lensing issue, which is really great. The one thing you might sort of notice is you lose a bit of resolution. So by default, the splat size is normally set higher in the um, original plugin. So it would be normally set to something like this. If I go back and change my resolution to something like 1280 by 1080 let's say without getting an error whoa there we go um, we'll see the resolutions kind of the same but um, we can again like play with that to get the um, the resolution looking how we want in in this case what I've done is I've just linked everything so you can basically change the frame ratio as you like and it should stay the same but I would recommend just having a slightly higher frame scale, otherwise you're gonna get that lensing issue. I'm not quite sure why I haven't gone into the GLSL to um, really figure out why this is happening, but um, just from noodling around with some of the parameters here, I found that this was a quick and easy fix, and just to get some of that detail back, pulling down the splat size until it feels kind of more or less, you know, accurate as you want. This one's a bit of a blurry scan anyway, but we can see that the water is kind of quite nice. Let's pull that back a little bit, move it around, I'm going to zoom out. So that's looking pretty good and that, that resolution is pretty, pretty, pretty high really. Um, anyway, so this is the fix. I've made a plugin that you can just drag and drop if you don't want to change that uniform scale on your own. It's a pretty simple fix, but there is a plugin. I'll link to that in the comments. I have recently started a Patreon, so it's going to be accessible through the Patreon um, through signing up to be a member of the free tier. It won't be behind a paywall. Okay, so that's the first one I wanted to show you. The second parameter or the, se the second sort of plugin addition that I have put together is this, um, this camera automated thing. So essentially it's just a way of, of automating the camera in a way that makes sense and having an easy way of saving positions. If I press the R key, it's going to remove all these positions from that table. And basically the scope of this is I have a little script that allows me to add camera positions when I press the one key. And um, these camera positions are cycled through using this count and select chop. It goes into a, um, a filter which is then allowing me to filter basically how fast these uh, changes are happening. So let's um, 
just go ahead and make this in the viewer so we can obviously move around the classic way. Um, but basically, obviously, if we're moving around like this, um, we, we maybe have some limitations because the way that we're manipulating the camera doesn't necessarily um, match how we're rotating here is not always going to match like our world space. So what I've done is to set the camera, I have this switch object. We can switch between the automated parameters that we've set. And this is essentially a space where we can set our positions. And let's see, I might have just added something by accident. But basically to clear the table and just set everything to zero, 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 let's just do that. Um, we would start off by pressing the R key. And we should get a view something like this. To, obviously your model will be different, but add that in and you can you can get your view that you can then manipulate. And then to basically move over to this base position operator that I've made where we can kind of switch those parameters and add them to our list without having to manually input them, I just switch my index to one. So index of zero on this switch is kind of moving through all those camera positions and index of one is just allowing me to set those base positions. So if I bring this up, I'm going to set a few positions just so that we can see. Let's go so we can see the face. It's always going to start at zero, zero, zero. You can just go in and um, manually delete that if you want, but I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to make a couple more changes. I'll elevate a little bit. And then when I'm ready, I'll press one. So we can see that's added to my list. Move around again. Keep going. Let's go lower. We've also got rotation if we want to go and play with those. Sometimes that can be fun. Let's try something funky. I'll go below, I'll go back up. I am not very um, good at setting 3D positions, so I kind of just hack about with it and then sometimes delete stuff. But let's just add these in. Uh, let's say this is, you know, I've really thought about this. It's really. Um, it's, it's what I want in terms of the movement, essentially all my camera angles. I'm going to flick back to index of zero. And we can see that now I'm sliding through all these positions. So that's kind of like an easy and fairly intuitive way for me to set camera positions. Maybe this won't work for you, but it, it works for me. Um, other elements of this, are I have just set a geo in the center to my look at parameter. You can obviously take that off. Um, in the case of taking that off, you're going to have a bit of a different um, process of setting camera positions just because the the view is going to be pointed in a different way so obviously the camera angles I've set are no longer looking at that um, at that central object but that's obviously something that you can determine as you set those camera positions and play around with your rotation but the basic of um, adding to that camera angle list stays the same if I was ready to um, delete all these things I can just press the R key for remove, I guess I just kind of arbitrarily selected that um, and it will delete everything from my camera positions list and just give me my initial position. And if I want to add more positions, if I go in, let's say I flick back so I don't add kind of an interpolated position and I set one final position, let's just rotate it all the way around. I'm just going to press the one key and we can see that that will add to my to my um, my camera angles list. And obviously if you have something that you set, um, I haven't kind of gone in with the granularity where you can on a key press delete individual things, but you can make the viewer active and you can say delete various um, inputs in, in that section. So that can be kind of useful. It might also be useful for you to set up kind of a key press to just quickly switch between this rather than doing it manually. But kind of a fun thing to, to play with. I'm going to delete that just so we save a little bit of space for our last thing. And the last thing I'm going to show you is basically how to make um, manipulations to these objects through various um, effects, kind of like we would do to a point cloud. So I believe this is looking for a pulse parameter. So it's just going to show an error. Let's do a keyboard in. Maybe I'll mo remove that before I ship that. But basically, you just have to um, relink that pulse and you should be good. The error sign might continue. You can always just delete it and repopulate and you should be fine. So 
it's up to you. It's still working if that error is there and you have a keyboard in. I'm going to drag that back so we can view it. So like before, we can maneuver this around. The camera is set to have auto-rotate on. This is me. Not a great scan of me, actually, but um, you know we can, we can see me in an alley in Toronto about a year or two ago. And the parameters that we have access to here, and basically I've kind of put everything into this container control, is we can first off control the Gaussian. So this is kind of just the general stuff that we could do controlling this, this Gaussian internally. So we can change things like the uniform splat size, or the uniform scale even, the splat size, bringing that down, the alpha threshold to get some interesting effects. You can also say automate these things. So that's basically um, on index one, you're just viewing the, the, the basic splat and you can manipulate it however works. If you want, you could sort of incorporate adding in that camera control thing and kind of mix and match. So that's index one, which is just the general. Index, um, or sorry, index zero. Index one is going to be adding noise. So the second noise control, by default, the amplitude is set to zero. But as I bring that up, we should see that I start to become distorted. We can obviously play around with things like the period, have it be really wild or really warpy to create this kind of interesting slit scan effect as we go around. Obviously it's not a slit scan, but you get that sort of like long, long warp. And then by playing around with things like um, the splat size, you can maybe make this a bit more CPU or GPU friendly, um, but also you can kind of add in some of your own aesthetic to the image and make it more like a point cloud, say, if you bring it down like that. You can have more of a traditional point cloud aesthetic. So this is fairly, you know, on fairly basic, just really adding in a adding in a noise. The second element is a bit more funky. So if I go to index two, this is where I sort of just add in a little feedback noise displacement loop. And so we have a few things here. We can obviously alter that that period. We can alter the amplitude. So basically how fast we're displacing that. And it does look fairly similar. I'm still playing around with some of these um, point cloud aesthetics to try and get something that maybe um, looks a bit more unique and cool. But one of the things I do love to do is zoom in and see these kind of artifacts um, moving around as they are distorted. But let's kind of zoom out. Let's, um, let's repulse that. Let's turn that amplitude really far down again so we, we can kind of find our scene again before doing some more stuff. And I maybe mentioned I have a bit of trouble just um, with spatial organization in my brain. So sometimes navigating 3D scenes is a, a bit wild for me. Press the H key. Let's see. I might just go back here to the standard one. Zoom out. OK, I guess I was just in my groin. Great. And so find a place that I like, go back to two, and then we can kind of see that we have this uh, this sort of interesting effect. Um, for folks that want to go in and build their own effects within this, I'd highly encourage that. You can probably do more interesting things than um, what I've been doing. And the space to go and do that would be go inside our Gaussian splat top or, or container, go inside the Gaussian splat thing here and basically what I have done is before this point transform that goes into calculate colors and calculate positions I've added in obviously my original which is the operator that goes into zero just the original splat source I've added in my noise so where you just distort that noise or add in the noise uh, and I've added in my feedback which we can go in and just take a look at. It's very, it's very basic. It's just like a little feedback loop. So I'm taking noise and adding to that every frame. One thing I've kind of added in is we have this cross parameter. So by playing with the cross parameter, you can essentially have a little filter. You could play with something like um, supermarket salads life parameter or thresholding to um, create effects where only certain areas are manipulated. I do find that when I do really funky effects, at least on my computer, it can kind of crash 
the the project so i've kind of kept on the simpler side of things just creating these sort of noise based distortions but i bet you could do some really interesting things um, the other thing i've added in that um, is a bit experimental and i, I want to work on more and i'd love to see what other people do with this is i have added a, a limit so something i love to do when i work with point clouds is essentially clamp those point clouds so essentially we have like a box and you can just see certain areas and it's a great way for basically spotlighting the center of a scene so normally what i would do is i would spotlight you know the center of the scene which is which is going to be me i'm just going to go down to um to the undistorted original just so we can see that and normally what i do to set this is i turn down the splat size so it's more like a point system play with the alpha threshold two so now we have more like a point system. This also means that if there's something that's going to be very GPU or CPU intensive, it's going to um, not be quite as intensive just because it's, it seems to be rendering less material and it just runs on my computer slightly better. Um, anyway, to implement this clamp, I've, as a default, just set minus five and five. I'm going to turn on clamp and clamp. And so now we can see that this is essentially like what we have if we're working with a traditional point cloud. We can sort of move around, we can see that I'm kind of spotlighted in the center. And obviously then we can turn on our different types of effects. Let's press one to reset that. The, um, the problem with this is obviously um, as I bring this up, I haven't found a way to sort of remove these edge particles. So if someone wants to um, manipulate and edit this to add these additional elements, that would be super cool. Because basically what happens as I start bringing up my splat size is we start losing the central definition. So we can see that we get more definition on what the image is. And if I kind of zoom up, everything within that is the same. Like that central part of the scene is the same. But we have this sort of... Um, we have this sort of wall. And the wall has sort of distorted splats as well like we can see if i zoom out like the splats are much bigger and more sort of um chunky than they would be if i was just not using this clamp or well, we're seeing some of those edge splats which just tend to be um slightly bigger so this is something that like i'd love to spend a bit more time on to essentially iron out or i'd love to see your um thoughts on this and your kind of modifications basically what we want to do is just have a threshold that essentially would keep these um, edge particles very very small and as you go in um, you only see like the central section so that's something maybe i'll go into the glsl and and play with um, but for now we have this sort of thing where we can play around a little bit with with having a box but it's not it's not the greatest but that's something that you know I'll probably continue to develop a little bit more and yeah I'm gonna make these things all available um, the portrait one will be available on the patreon under the free membership tier um, and the noise and the camera controls I'm just gonna put in the minimum tier which is three dollars a month um, if you want to use them obviously please add questions comments in the chat and I'm happy to answer them anyway I hope this has been a sort of a useful video I hope you get some ideas for playing with your own gouge and splats and I'd also just love to see the um, content that you make as you go